do you know that you're getting screwed? Are you, you really want to stick with that intro? Hi, Rich here and at Simplified Filming we teach you how to make low budget movies make money so you can have a product that generates passive income for the rest of your life. And right now I am giving away one free strategy call worth $500, giving it away to a few lucky filmmakers like yourself. So claim your spot immediately by clicking the link below. Today we are going to go over a few things to know that you're getting screwed on your contract with your filmmaker or before you even sign a contract, things to look for to see if your distributor is reputable. But warning, 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 this is not legal advice. To get actual legal advice, you gotta talk to somebody legal, like, uh, you know, a lawyer. These are just some of the things that I have collected over time and have seen, including myself. So let's talk about the biggest things that distributors use to scam people and let's move the camera. So I will have an actual numbered list, but one of the honorable mentions is intermediate aggregators. What is an intermediate aggregator? An intermediate aggregator essentially is that you have a distribution company that deals directly with the market. Then you have somebody else that tries to find distributors that work for your film. So these are intermediate aggregators. Um, they go by producer representatives, they go by sales agents, they go by we're trying to screw you over. But their sole job essentially is to find filmmakers. They will reach out to you and try to represent you to find a good distributor. They take usually charge money up front and they charge a percentage that they make. So once they find a distributor that signs you on, the distributor will get their cut. They'll take a little, the intermediate distributor or sales agent or producer representative will take their chunk of the pie and then you'll finally get a couple of the crumbs. But one thing that they don't want you to know is most distributors own the aggregation companies. It's kind of genius if you're evil. Instead of distributors reaching directly to them, they create smaller companies run by two or three guys that do all the research reaching out and try and find them. And in the end, the distributor just makes that 10% back extra anyway. Basically what you gotta do is when you work with a distributor or a sales agent or one of these we might screw you over companies call is you got to ask them if they work directly with the market. If they don't work directly with the market, hang up. You don't want to work with an intermediate aggregator no matter how sexy their pitch sounds. It's really important that you ask whoever's calling you on the other end of the line if they work directly with the market. And one little tip as I would recommend is never pay for your film to be distributed. Let's say you do find a reputable distributor. What are some of the seven things that you should be looking out for in your contract. Hi, I'm John, and I'm gonna talk about the first thing that you should be looking out for when it comes to bad deals and contracts and distributors. So, deal number one would be your revenue split. You really gotta watch out when you're signing up that you don't sign away too many of your rights, that the revenue split still seems fair. Remember the fact that you made them a product that they wouldn't have without you. And unless you have an A-list actor, you don't have a lot to actually negotiate with. Because again, there's other distributors and there's other content creators out there that are willing to actually probably take yours. So just make sure you don't sign away too much of your right. Try to get that deal as close as possible to 50-50, if not more beneficial. I've seen deals as low as 30% to the distributor. I've even seen it as low as 20% to the distributor. So try to push for that, especially if you have a high quality product. And second would be cap expenses. Now, there's a lot of distributors out there that are going to charge you for the distribution expenses, such as marketing and things like that. They're going to want that to come out of the gross profits rather than their side. This is something I want to encourage you to negotiate as much as possible, even if it means you're giving away a little teeny bit extra of your percentage revenue split to make sure they take care of it. There has been many filmmakers that have been screwed over because they charge everything to your movie and then your movie goes in the hole. This is how that essentially works. Let's say this glass of water costs $25, right? To market. But guess what? Here's the deal. Is I have your film right here that needs to get some water on it or to the marketplace. So they will put that inside there. 
And then what they do is they have another low budget filmmaker that does this and does that and they have their film. And here we have a faith base and we have a horror film and we have where they put this all in and it still only costs them $25 for all of this, but guess what? They're gonna charge every single one of those filmmakers $25 for this particular glass of water. You, you, you wanna see me drink it. <clears throat> Tastes exactly what you think it would. Hit the like button, please! That's why putting a cap on your expenses is incredibly important. Or have them take care of the expenses out of their pocket. If you can't negotiate that, have some sort of cap on the expenses saying, you can't spend more than XYZ without contacting me first. This will prevent them from just running up the bill, charging like $30,000 to your movie that you'll never get to see a dime of, that all of your funds are gonna go to paying for until that $30,000 is paid off. This happens all the time, so make sure you're careful about those negotiations. And number three is limit and define cross-collateralization. What does cross-collateralization? As I previously mentioned, it's where they combined all a bunch of films like this into one particular deal. This is a way that they can really screw you over, so make sure you clearly ask them what cross-collateralization is going to mean for you in your, your for your project. Now there are some particular instances where there'll be a marketer that we will buy uh, not just one particular film from a distributor but maybe an entire collection of films and if that's the case then what you want to do is you want that to actually happen if they'll only buy 15 low budget movies then you want your film to be involved in that and that's a way to make a little bit of extra dough but you want to make sure they really define what cross-collateralization means and not, like we previously talked about, charging all the films that sort of money. And number four, you also want to make sure they send you the money no matter what. A lot of distribution companies won't send you the money if like, the payout is less than a few hundred dollars. You want them to notify you and send it even if it's a penny. And step number five is hit the like button if you enjoy these extra characters. Now let's talk about minimum guarantee. Minimum guarantee basically means that you get your film back if they don't reach a particular quota. This will be something that they will argue a lot with. That they'll be like, oh well we don't know how much I'm always gonna make. And your response should always be, well haven't you been in this a while? Alright, well give me an estimation how much you think this movie will make. Really push them to give you some sort of quote and then say, okay, within three months, if that quota is not met, then I get the rights to my film back. And if they're not willing to some, sign some sort of minimum guarantee, then you should not be working with that company. Because would you mow, would you have a guy mow your lawn if he told you from the get-go, I have no idea how much this is going to cost me. Uh, I better just start mowing and we'll just see what happens. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. So it's the same thing with your distributors. Make them give you a minimum guarantee and that the rights re revert back to you if they don't reach that minimum guarantee. And a quick bonus one is, don't sign too long of a contract. Three years, maximum. The last couple ones are pretty simple, so let's rapid fire through these son of a guns. The sixth one is a bankruptcy escape clause. If they go bankrupt, whether it's by, because it was bought by a company or if there's any sort of shift in ownership, the rights reserved back to you, especially bankruptcy. There has been filmmakers that have lost their film into the abyss of legal and law forever because that clause didn't exist. Number seven, no matter what, Hang on to your ancillary products. You should be able to sell the movie from your website or your Facebook page or whatever your social media homepage is for your movie and reserve the right to sell the hoodie, books, coffee mug. And step number eight is to hit the like button and subscribe because you're an awesome filmmaker and you want to learn more about this. So de definitely take advantage of that free pre-production strategy call that I am offering only for a limited time. Jump on a call with me and we will talk about your movie and how to get it running. Here is a video specifically about my story and where I listen to the my film story. And go ahead, click on that and watch it. And in the meantime, always be creative.